brothers, partners, friends, and fellow Lasallians. Today we gather to celebrate an important milestone for the Lasallian family in the Philippines and in East Asia. Today we give thanks to God for his abundant grace in the life of Brother Edgar Esparagosa, FSC, who will be having his perpetual profession of vows. After eight years of temporary profession and living the apostolic community and consecrated life of the brothers, Brother Edgar, through his perpetual vows, will make an act of permanent consecration to God and a lifelong commitment to love Christ, to live his message, and to follow him in the footsteps of St. John Baptist de La Salle and all the Holy Brothers. In our most holy Eucharist, let us pray that Brother Edgar may continue to be inspired by the life of St. LaSalle, whose love for the young led him to give his life for the mission that God has entrusted to us. May our prayers today become songs of praise to God for the dedication, generosity, and trust that Brother Edgar has shown through his resolve to heed God's call to live like De La Salle for the rest of his life as he begins a new chapter in his journey as a brother of the Christian schools. Let us all rise and join in the singing of the entrance hymn. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus, our Lord, is risen. The song that we sing tonight is Alleluia. Today we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the dead. And this is the central mystery of our faith as Christians. We too are invited to rise with Jesus. But first, we have to die to our old self, our selfish desires, the spirit of hopelessness and misery. Our confidence lies in Jesus, who conquered the power of sin and death. United with Jesus, we too can become new persons. Today we will also witness the perpetual profession of vows of Brother Edgar. We will join him in thanking the Lord for the gift of vocation to the religious life. And we will also pray that he will say the word, the magic word, forever today from the heart. Brother Edgar, say what you mean and mean what you say. You were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and listen to the Word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John had preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and of the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all rise to honor the Holy Gospel.
Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and she saw the stone removed from the tomb. And so Mary Magdalene ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they put him. And so Peter and the other disciple went out. They came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter, and he arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In view of the homily, it is the tradition for the De La Salle brothers in the Philippines that our canonical superior or his representative shares his reflection during significant moments of a brother's faith journey. We shall now listen to the reflections of Brother Mandy Duhunko, FSC, Chief Operating Officer, De La Salle, Philippines. At the start of this Mass, I promised Brother Edgar that he, I would not mention that he is a distinguished alumnus of Jack and Jill of Bacolod. <laughs> well, yes, and now I shall start. In the Gospel today, we hear of the bewilderment of Mary Magdala, Peter, and the beloved disciple. The body of Jesus is missing. And the logical assumption was that it was stolen. I can only imagine what it was like to be one of Jesus' friends. Three years with him must have been filled with so many experiences, ranging from exhilarating to harrowing. As Jesus was arrested and killed, they must have wondered how things went amiss so suddenly. In the song, Could We Start Again, Please, in the music Jesus Christ Superstar, one of the lines go, I think you've made your point now and you've even gone a bit too far. As these events were unfolding on that first Easter day, it is no wonder that two disciples who were walking to Emmaus wandered aloud with a tinge of disappointment. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. But God's promises are always fulfilled, even if it seems that we have reached a dead end. For those of us who choose the religious life and those who have committed themselves to mission, it is probably, it, we probably occasionally find ourselves wondering the same, especially in difficult times. Today, we celebrate, but we know that challenges and difficulties can arise at any moment. On this Easter day, we are assured that Jesus' followers are never left disappointed for long. We are assured that God's promises are always fulfilled, knowing that allows us to be brave in risks we take and daring in the commitments we make. Today, 
we also celebrate such a daring commitment. Brother Edgar will profess perpetual vows, and he has also finally shaven off his goatee. The process that led Brother Edgar to this day was one of joy, but also of hardship, endurance, and careful discernment. Just as our responsorial psalm extolled God's unending mercy, Brother Edgar's life is a living witness to this fidelity of God. Like most brothers, our understanding of our vocation evolved over time. As my postulancy director once told me, the reason you join the brothers is not the reason you will stay. Brother Edgar's story is no different. When he first got involved in working for the poor, committing his entire life to mission was the furthest thing from his mind. In fact, the only reason he, init he initially joined Balayan was because the girls were there. It was through this organization that Brother Edgar joined Balayan and first heard the whispering of God in the stories and faces of those he served. Unbeknownst to him, God had already begun the process of calling him deeper into his work. Brother Edgar was so captivated with working for the poor that he opted to volunteer for one year. That year turned out rough. He found himself selling chandeliers made of shells and raising pigs to augment the community funds. Despite the hardship, he heard God's calling, not in a flash of revelatory light or deep, a deep, booming, disembodied voice, but in the request of the children, saying, Teacher, how do you write this letter? What do you call this color? How do you solve this math problem? Thus, he volunteered for another year, which led him to Bagak Bataan. Admittedly, Brother Edgar found the work of a volunteer very difficult, and many times he wanted to give up. He, he did his work well, and he could definitely claim that he had done his part. Before it was even fashionable, he was already accused of being a rebel, paraded before the Barangay Council, and interrogated publicly. It would have made perfect sense to give up volunteering to start a well-paying job after two years as a volunteer. After all, what son does not want to help out with family expenses? As he con contemplated his options, a child once again took claim of his attention. And I translate very li liberally, teacher, kailangan ko po magbanyo. Teacher, I need to go to the toilet. Please help me. Despite his own concerns, there was only one question that burned in Edgar's heart. Paano na ang mga bata? Who will take care of the children? It was in Brother Edgar's second year as a volunteer that we met each other. I was a young brother assigned to Bagak, and he was director of the volunteers' community. Another brother requested that I try to invite him to consider joining the Aspirancy Program. So I approached him one day to invite him to walk with me. Halika, lakad tayo. My premise was that we will exercise together and hopefully lose weight together. No volunteer has ever joined the brothers and stayed. So my expectations were actually rather low. So Brother Edgar, you and I have come a long way from those days, and here we are today, still fat. Today, you make, your pub you make public your intention to be a brother for the rest of your life. You commit to the Institute as much as the Institute commits to you. Halika, lakad tayo, has now taken on a wider meaning. From the moment you made your first vows, you have chosen to join this journey, which was started by John Baptist de La Salle and his first followers more than 300 years ago. You are one of us, and we are happy to have you among our company. 
You have come a long way since your Balayan days. You've been assigned to many places and fulfilled a variety of duties. Some of them were very dear to you, while others were a bit more challenging. Through all of these difficult ro different roles, you discovered God's enduring love and consistent presence, even if reality turned out different from your expectations. In the years of your temporary vows, you have further confirmed that God provides beyond what you ask. God's providence never failed you, and you have learned to cling to the promise of God's goodness no matter what happens. In the book, The Little Prince by Antoine de saint Exupéry, he famously wrote that it is with the heart that one sees rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. In the heroes and heroines of many sagas, legends, and narratives, the defining characteristic that ensures success is authentic goodness. That is, the ability to do good without being self-conscious or expecting anything in return. In these years that I have known Brother Edgar, I have witnessed his willingness to give of himself in simple and unassuming ways. He is kind, gentle, humble, and very generous. He also happens to be my current community director. Brother Edgar, as the years unfold for you, please do your best to keep this, these virtues no matter what assignment you are given. No matter what authority you may wield one day, you may, when you find yourself entrusted with authority and power, always be kind, compassionate, and fair to those entrusted to your care. Today, we celebrate the resurrection. It is fitting that we hold this ceremony today as an affirmation that the need for people who will continue to commit their lives for the mission of education is as valid as ever. Just as Simon Peter was disturbed when the risen Jesus asked him, do you love me more than these? May the question that unsettled brothers Ed Brother Edgar's heart, paano na ang mga bata? likewise echo in the hearts of those discerning their calling. As we celebrate this day, Brother Edgar, know that I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of the brother you've become. May you always be attentive to God's tiny whispering voice saying, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Like the disciple whom Jesus loved, may you be able to exclaim, it is the Lord in the many events that unfold in your life. Congratulations. Please all rise. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance has con is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do and all his works. I do. And all his empty show. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. My dear friends, may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us 
new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. standing. The religious profession that we will witness today is a clear testament that God's Spirit is very much alive in the minds and hearts of those who are open to God's actions in their lives. Today, Brother Edgar takes a bold step forward in his willingness to listen to God and to respond to Him through the service of his neighbor. We now ask Father Louis to bless the symbols of, symbols of his openness to God's love in his life. The symbols are the professional cross, the professional ring, and the plaque of appreciation. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. O God, most faithful in your promises, most just in your dispensing of eternal goods, bless the symbols of humility, fidelity, and of apostolic faith, and of zeal for the Christian education of the young, especially the poor. Grant, we pray, Lord, that those who use them may rejoice in following your Son, and by being fervently committed to your love, they may glorify you in serving your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We will now have the rites of final profession. We invite Brother Edgar to come to the front and make his request for final vows. We request our brother visitor, Brother Armin Luistro, FSC, to come to the podium and grant permission for final vows. Dear brother visitor, it is through the loving providence and mercy of the God of history, through the intercession of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and my mother, St. Joseph, the patron of the Institute, and through the merits of St. John Baptist de La Salle, that I have come to know and love the La Salian family and its challenging apostolate among the people of God. Believing sincerely, that I am called to be a De La Salle brother all my life, I now humbly ask of you, brother visitor, to permit me to make my final religious commitment 
in the community of the Dalasal Brothers, whose principal aim is the service of the poor through education. Dear Brother Edgar, our holy founder said in his meditations, and I quote, you have consecrated yourself to God. You should consider the day you made this move as the one on which your happiness on earth began, to be completed one day in heaven. But it was not for that day alone that you have consecrated yourself to God. Since you made a consecration of your soul on that occasion, and since your soul will live forever, your dedication to God must be forever. If you have begun that on earth, it should have only been carried out here, a sort of apprenticeship of what you will do eternally in heaven. Dear Brother Edgar, it is with Easter joy that I grant you permission to pronounce your final vows. I offer you my most fraternal congratulations for the decision you have made to consecrate yourself to God totally and to the pursuit of His glory to the apostolic ministry of Christian education. The step you are taking, dear Brother Edgar, is a sign of hope and vitality for the entire Institute, and in particular, for our district of East Asia. I thank you for your commitment and your generosity. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brother Edgar will now, will now recite the vow formula of the Brothers of the Christian Schools. May we request his religious sponsor, Brother Mandy Duhunko FC, and Brother Armin Luistro to stand beside Brother Edgar as he makes his perpetual profession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, prostrate with the most profound respect before your infinite and admirable majesty, I consecrate myself entirely to you to procure your glory as far as I shall be able and as you will require of me. For this purpose, I, Brother Edgar Salvador Esparagosa, FSC, promise and vow to unite myself to remain in society with the brothers of the Christian schools who are associated to conduct together and by association schools for the service of the poor to go wherever I may be sent and to do whatever I shall be assigned either by the body of the society or by its superiors. Wherefore, I promise and vow association for the service of the poor through education, stability in the institute, obedience, chastity, and poverty in accordance with the rule of approbation and the rule of the institute. I promise to keep these vows faithfully for all my life. In testimony thereof, I have signed done at the Chapel of the Divine Child, the Sal Green Hills, Mandaluyong City, Philippines, on the fourth day of the April in the year of our Lord, 2021. May we now invite Brother Armin to give the professional ring and Brother Mandy for the professional cross to Brother Edgar.
Let us give Brother Edgar a warm round of applause. Again, a round of applause for Brother Edgar Esparagosa, FSC. Please all rise for the prayers of the faithful. Christ is the Lord of life, raised up by the Father. In turn, He will raise us up by His power. Let us address our petitions to the Father in heaven, as we say, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole church, the community of the disciples of Christ, may she follow her master faithfully in spite of all opposition and attacks. We pray. Risen, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For the Holy Father and the leaders of the church, May they always put their trust in the Lord and bravely witness to Him in their lives, we pray. Risen, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the priests and religious, may they find in the example of Jesus the strength to persevere in their vocation, we pray. Risen, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For ourselves and all the people dear to us, May we be blessed in our undertakings and protected from all evil, we pray. Risen, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For members of the Lasallian family, may we be more inspired to fulfill our role in uplifting the value of education of the youth, especially the poor, we pray. Risen, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the De La Salle brothers, May we remain committed to the Lasallian mission. May we, may we be one towards the realization of a community imbued with the values of faith, zeal for service, and communion in mission. We pray. Risen, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. Father, your Son conquered the power of death. Let our celebration today raise us up and renew our lives. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Please all rise. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and gave you thanks he broke the bread he gave it to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more he gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in my memory. Let us again proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat...
celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread all over the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose and Broderick, our bishops, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, all the apostles, all the saints, especially Saint John Baptist de la Salle, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for our personal intention, especially for the intentions of Brother Edgar. Lord from every evil, deliver our country and our families from other evils. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety and fear as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Sapagkat sa iyo ang kaharian, kapangyarihan at kapurihan, magpakailanman. Sina you said, Lord, to the apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us greet each other with a sign of God's peace.
Mary Magdalene said, I have seen the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, this is Jesus, the risen Christ. He is the Lamb of God who takes away our sins and the sin of the world. Happy are those invited to his banquet. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy, worthy that you should, that you enter, should enter under, under, under my, my roof, but, but only say, say the word, word and my and soul, my soul shall, be healed. shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Please all rise. O oh, look upon your church, O oh God, with unfeeling love and fever, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The district would like to thank the following. Brother Visitor, Brother Armin Luistro, FSC, and his auxiliary visitors. Our Mass Presider, Father Louis Punsalan, SVD. Brother Edmundo Fernandez, FSC, the President of La Salle Green Hills. DLSP Central House and all those who work behind the scenes. Thank you very much. Let us now welcome Brother Edgar as he gives his response. A blessed afternoon to all of us gathered here physically and to those who are joining us virtually. Happy Easter po sa inyong lahat. My short sharing this afternoon will focus on the theme, Buhay Bro, a life worth living, and a message of gratitude for all. What makes life worth living? This is one of the many questions I asked when I was looking for a clear direction in life as I entered college at the University of St. Lasalle Bacolod. Is it all about reaching life goal plans? Is it serving and providing family and providing for family's needs? Or meeting the love of your lifetime? Or is it having your own family and raising your kids well? Or working in a well-established company? I agree that these are just some of the things and situations that makes life worth living. As a young man searching for the purpose and meaning of life, I became more curious and inquisitive. In fact, I also asked the different questions I mentioned a while ago. Relying upon my own comprehension and experiences, I could not fathom. So what really makes life worth living? What was surprising as my journey continues is the reality of the invitation to go beyond the usual things that people believe to make life worth living. Many things were revealed when I decided to be a full-time volunteer under the Lasallian Volunteer Program of the Dalasal Philippines for two years and meeting the Dalasal Brothers of Bagak community. It opened a lot of doors to explore and discover more about myself. Being a brother for almost nine years is, a, is both a gift and a challenge. The challenge to remain faithful to the promises I made when I took my first vows and each year that I'm renewing it is always there, most especially when an unpleasant situation arises and unexpected things happen along the way. At the moment, these for me are the reasons that I consider the brother's life as a gift that definitely makes this life worth living. To be able to respond freely to God's call. To be of service to the young, especially the poor. And here are some photos of my students, brothers and people entrusted to my care.
doing things that allows personal growth and professional development, to be with a community of brothers who continuously strive to live out the gospel values and be available for the mission. And lastly, strengthening one's relationship with God by recognizing His enduring love for me. This enduring God's love I have known, felt, and experienced can be represented in four letter Bs. The first letter B stands for behind. The God who was behind me, ready to push and motivate me in times of doubts and every time I experience challenges and difficulties. Second, letter B stands for beside. I remember the God who walks beside me, the God who never abandons me and journeys with me every day. Third B stands for before. In saying yes to the many invitations of God, I realize that God is already there before me, before going to my next community and doing the ministry entrusted to me. God is already there. Lastly, the last letter B stands for beyond. The God who is beyond what I feel, beyond what I know, and His love is beyond what I have already experienced, for it was His graces that works beyond what I can do. Allow me also to take this opportunity to express my sincerest thank you to the following Brother Armin, Brother Dodo, and Brother Ricky, for the trust and support you have given and showed to me. Brother Mandy, for being with me ever since I joined the Aspirancy Program way back in 2010. Brother Vic, for being my Parmini mentor for almost eight months. My brother for mentors, Brothers Vince, Brother Vincent, Brother Ray, Brother JJ, and Brother Bong, and of course, to my directors, Brothers June, Dot, and Brother Bobby. To my Filipino batchmates, Brothers Abbott, Cliff, Mark, and Paul, thank you for always being there for me. I also would like to, thank, to take this opportunity to thank Brother Dindo, who have gone ahead of us, Brother Kenneth, and Brother Dante for being my brother presidents when I was still in teaching ministry and to all the brothers, maraming salamat po. I wish to also mention one of our Lasallian partners, Manong Ivan de Ramos of Balayan University of St. Salvacolod, who have also gone ahead of us, but really inspired and guided me, and I was able to went back to the right track, and to the Balayan staff for accompanying me and allowing me to appreciate life. To all the Lasallian partners that I work with in the different ministries from teaching, promoting vocations, and formation work, thank you. To my parents, Mam Si Edita and Chief Espa, my apologies if you cannot be here with me, but thank you for for teaching me to be a loving, generous man, and for allowing me to do what I want in life. To my sister Colleen, relatives and friends, Madam Ogid nga salamat. Allow me also to mention the different youth organizations and programs that I work with and work for, St. Brother Miguel Academy Bacolod, La Salian Youth Corps de la Salipa, Si Cristo at Tayo de la Salipa, Search in de la Salipa, de la Salipa Aspirants and Contacts, St. Brother Miguel Academy Bacolod, 1911 Aspirants, Masalian Volunteers, thank you for the trust and the inspiration you have given to me. All these years of being a brother allowed me to be comfortable with the unknown, to live with the ambiguities of life, but at the same time, to be trusting in faith. As a result, 
it is a liberating, empowering, and life-giving experience for me. Madamo Gid, salamat. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. And may Jesus continue to live in our hearts forever. Thank you very much, Brother Edgar. At this point, let us offer a short prayer for the parents of Brother Edgar, retired police colonel Edgar Esparagoza and Edita Esparagoza. Please all stand and together let us pray for them. Lord God, please bless the parents of Brother Edgar Edgar and Editha, who are joining us online. They have molded and guided Brother Edgar during his formative years. The unconditional love and unwavering care they have for this young man continue to inspire this follower of De La Salle to commit himself to serve you through the Ministry of Education. We are grateful for their partnership in the La Salian mission. We ask you to continue to provide them with an open mind and heart as they entrust their son to your protective hands. Bestow upon them, parents of Brother Edgar, good health, peace of mind, and faith in God. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this point, the brothers would like to recognize the generosity of Brother Edgar's family. Allow me to read the citation. The Lasallian East Asia District, the Lasallian family in the Philippines, expresses its appreciation and gratitude to Edgar and Edita Esparagosa for the joyful gift of their son, Brother Edgar Esparagosa, FSC, to the service of the church through the Ministry of Christian Education. On the occasion of his final profession of religious vows as a brother of the Christian schools, we pledge to you our prayers and assure you of your participation in the merits that come as fruit of our educational ministry. Given this fourth day of April in the year of our Lord, 2021, at La Salle Green Hills, signed, Brother Armin Luistro, FSC, Brother Visitor, Lasallian East Asia District. Please all rise for the concluding rites. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion, defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, endow you with a price of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.